All right, real quick before we start the video, I just got a new suction cup camera mount for my Tesla. It's a fat gecko triple mount. I was expecting that it would be a lot better than a tripod, and in terms of not falling over while I drive, it is, but it turns out the footage is really bumpy, and uh, I was considering not even uploading it at all, but I figured since this is the first time I've done FSD on this particular trip, I would put it up anyway. I think after you watch for a little while, it's easier to get used to, but yeah, I apologize for the bumpy footage. Looking for a solution for the next video. Here we go. All right, guys, I'm about to enable the beta. And here we go. So welcome back to another Silver Fox Tesla full self-driving chronicles video. Today we're gonna to be taking a trip from the, we're in the wrong lane here. We're supposed to be over here. Let's stay over here. Um, we're on a trip from Queens to Long Island to visit a friend of mine. And uh, okay, there's no one behind me, but we should be more to the left here because we're getting on the highway here. So that's already two times I'm correcting it. So anyway, if you haven't seen my previous video, let's see, is it gonna stay in the correct spot here now maybe? Let's see, we should be stopping at this light. Okay, and we have a kind of weird on-ramp here to the highway. So we'll see how the car handles it. Anyway, my thing with FSD, I'm not here to show you a stress test, stress test of the car of, of FSD beta to, to put it to the limits and everything. I'm here to show you what it's like trying to drive your normal route with it and taking over any time you feel uncomfortable. So that's what I already did twice. The car, for some reason, wanted to get over to the right. Um, maybe because there weren't lane lines there, but it's still treated as though it's two lanes by pretty much everybody who drives around here. So anyway, yeah, um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be taking over any time I feel uncomfortable. So now we're going and let's see, I'm cautious here. This is kind of a difficult on-ramp. All right, and going, I guess, eh, this, is, this is fine. Anyway, if you saw my last video, I made some silly misunderstandings. I didn't have Navigate on Autopilot engaged, which meant that getting onto the highway um, was a difficult task. And yeah, it's going to confirm the lane change. And I think I, I took over. Yeah, okay. Um, but now it should be able to handle highway driving on its own because I have Navigate on Autopilot enabled. But I'm gonna be, <laughs> it's hard for me to focus on talking while I'm, I'm making sure that it's doing everything right in these scenarios. But anyway, yeah. Uh, at one point, I think I am also going to have to take over because I don't believe the, the car has my intended route uh, planned. But we'll see how that goes. In fact, probably when I get the chance, I'll just uh, change lanes over anyway. So I'm kind of in the lane that I wanna be. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be seeing is this easier or harder than driving this way on my own? Um, and yeah, so in my last video, I didn't have Navigate on autopilot on. So apparently my understanding of it now is that full self-driving beta is kind of a street thing. And if you're driving on the highway, even if the car is driving for you, that's considered Navigate on autopilot, which is an older technology. Um, it is not the same thing as full self-driving. It's not, um, I suppose maybe not using the same neural nets. I'm not exactly sure the difference. I'm gonna signal to change lanes here. Let's see. Um, so yeah, I like that you can still just use auto uh, lane change even while I navigate on autopilot because um, I have the auto lane change thing or the like, you know, <laughs> auto lane change with the signal is kind of like semi-manual because I'm still telling the car to do it. But the setting where it decides to change lanes for itself is uh, currently I have it set on um, mild because I want to see what the car is doing before, even though I have it set to where I control it myself, like I have to approve it, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so we're going to be on the highway for a little stretch of time, so um, hopefully I won't have anything too important about the uh, self-driving to point out, so instead I will talk to you guys about some current Tesla news and things that are going on. Um, as of today, there was the price increase. Okay, let's see. We're going to break through this guy. Okay, good. Uh, there was a, a weird price increase that I heard about today, but I guess if we're going to talk about the price increase, I should start off by talking about the recent price decreases. Um, and I am somebody who recently purchased before all of this went down. Am I disappointed? Um, in some sense, yes. I'm also going to change lanes over here. In some sense, yes, but I bought used, so it doesn't affect me quite in the same way. Um, especially since I have such a rare configuration of a silver metallic Model 3 long range with white interior. They're very hard to find those. So even if the value of this car has gone down, it doesn't really disappoint me that much because trying to actually compare it to something I don't even, I haven't looked, but I feel like it'd be very hard to find 
this car for sale right now and uh, used. And it's you can't buy it. It's impossible to buy a new because it's discontinued. So it doesn't bother me that much. But yeah, obviously the fact that they not only lowered prices a ton, but that they lowered prices in, in conjunction with the um, the tax credit is kind of insane to where if you had been one of those unlucky people who bought a Model 3 um, or Model Y or honestly any of the models like right before all of this went down, there would be quite a difference uh, in price and for pretty much the same vehicle. Um, so I can understand being, people being disappointed, but at the end of the day, I guess if they're going to change the price, uh, I assume there is always going to be one day where the price is one thing and another day where the price is something else. Okay, it wants me to change lanes here. Uh, do I want to approve that? Uh, not yet. No, we don't need to do that just yet. But uh, yeah, the, the way that they do it so abruptly without warning is just one of those weird things that Tesla does and uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, no, I don't, need to con I don't need to lane change here, but we will soon. We're going to pass a few more people and then we'll change. Anyway. So, yeah, but then today what I heard is that for the, I believe it was for the Model Y, they raised it like $500, but um, depending on the configuration, that will change things. Depending on the configuration that you get, that would mean that only like the, the very, very base Model Y with one of the base colors is, um, let's see, we're gonna, is it going to break? Is this guy going to come over? Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, no, of course, doing everything fine. Yeah. Um, only with the base colors and like base trim and everything can you um, can you still qualify for the tax credit. So that's uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just ready to press either pedal if any one of these people tries to come over quickly. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. All right, we can we can go over to the right lane now. I'm not sure which uh, exit this car is planning on taking, but I know which one I want it to take. So I'll probably just take over. Um, yeah, it's going to take the exit after the one that I would normally take, so I'll just have it take over at that point and see how quickly it can reroute, make sure everything is handled properly. Anyway, me rambling about Tesla price stuff. So yeah, it's it's now it's very specific if you want to get a Model Y and qualify for the tax credit. So they're doing a lot of weird stuff with the prices, and, and I think, as everybody does, I wish they would just be more transparent about these things. I mean, Tesla, like a lot of, you know, things that Elon says and, and, and Tesla's kind of public, you know, standpoint, like the way they want to be perceived tends to, they, like they, they, they act like they want to be seen as such an honest company, but there are a lot of things, I guess, that every company does that at the end of the day aren't that honest. With Tesla, there's also something that they still do, I'm pretty sure, which I really find so stupid, is that when you first log on, uh, like open up a, a web page to look at a configuration for any Tesla, the default, I believe, is to show you the um, potential savings price <laughs> after gas. Okay, I'm gonna put on the signal here. Let's see if the car takes the exit, or if I have to, um, if I have to make it take the exit. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I have to. I have to take over here. That's fine. Okay, we're hitting the brake. We're gonna disengage, and um, actually, I'll re-engage right here. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, no, that's not. That's not full. Yeah. Okay, now we're back, and we have a yield sign here. So I'm gonna see what the car does. It may hit the brakes hard. We're clear, we're all clear. Uh, no, okay. It's changing lanes for me, even though I thought I had to confirm that. A Little harder braking than necessary to stop behind this guy, but we seem to be back on track. So that was very nice, very nice, nicely handled. Um, okay, yeah. So uh, transparency, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the potential savings. It's so stupid. They show you, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, they show you the price of the car subtracting like I don't know how much money due to how much you would save over six years of not buying gas which is stupid for so many reasons for one thing it's just not accurate bottle it's not accurate it's not the real price and 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 it's it's based on just completely arbitrary numbers like who, how you how you don't you don't know how long the person's gonna have the Tesla you don't know how often they're gonna drive it you don't know how often they drive their gas car and more importantly you don't know that they drove a gas car in the first place how do you know that they're saving any money? What if they came from another electric car? What if they're buying another Tesla, you know? It's just very stupid. It's just very stupid. So, um, yeah, uh, I think we're gonna lane change to get around this guy. Um, anyway, I wonder if the car would have like figured that out for me, but I mean, I don't mind putting on my signal every once in a while to, hello, change lanes, change lanes. All right, fine, I'll change the lane. I don't know, I had my signal on there and it wasn't changing the lane. All right. 
Anyway, yeah, little things like that though, not a big deal. So, that's that. Other Tesla stuff, this is not as recent. We kind of swerved there to avoid, I don't really know what, but it wasn't anything too jarring. Oh, also we have a weird, oh, let's see, it sees this, this guy coming out of his car, but this other guy is also stopping or moving a little bit to the left more than I would want considering there's cars in the lane to the left of me, but it was trying to avoid that guy getting out of his car, so that's nice. Anyway, yeah, we have, um, we have an interesting turn here. Yeah, the, the car is, the, the navigation is correct. Um, where the lane kind of splits off a little bit like late, you know, because there are, there are earlier times where you might want to um, turn. Let's see what, what the car does. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We need to be turning over here. We need to be turning over here. So it didn't quite, didn't quite nail that. I'm not sure what it would have done. Uh, as I've said plenty of times, um, the purpose of this is not to stress test the car, but to see what uh, what it will do that I'm comfortable with and to take over any time I'm not comfortable with it. I hope you guys don't mind me constantly switching between talking about my route and talking about Tesla news because I just want to keep constant entertainment, constant uh, content of some sort while we're having this uh, hopefully non-eventful full self-driving adventure. It's been pretty okay so far, I would say. Now we're getting to the street portion of the drive, though. We have a lot of traffic lights, a lot of stop signs coming up, so we'll have um, more more times to see what FSD actually does besides just staying on the highway. Okay, we could have come to a smoother stop behind this guy. I think some of the reasons that the car stops uh, somewhat abruptly uh, is, is probably due to following distance. So I'm actually going to set my following distance uh, much closer since we're just on the street right now on the highway. I'll, I'll set it a little further, especially if I'm going like 70 Okay, we don't need to be signaling here. We're not we're not actually changing lanes Okay, but here we should be staying over to the left. Good. I was about to correct it, but the car did that itself and Then we're coming to another light And yeah, I, I believe sometimes the the car will break harder than although I yeah, that was see that, that I think this was a slightly smoother stop than my last one because I set my following distance closer. Uh, unless the following distance is only used on the highway, because I'm not really sure, but I've, I've definitely noticed on the highway that it will sometimes sort of slam on the brakes if you're in traffic because it if the person in front of you stops like even kind of a, a gradual stop, it needs to stop a lot sooner because it needs to keep that space if that's what you have it set to do. Right, but so anyway, uh, other Tesla new stuff, um, the yoke thing, like I said, it's like a couple weeks old at this point. Um, they finally offered an option for the steering wheel. Um, if you have a yoke, you can also have, uh, a, you can choose a steering wheel and I believe there's a retrofit for it. I don't recall if that was free or not. I think you'd have to pay to go back on that, but I think that's a fantastic option. In general, whenever there are controversial things or they're, you know, polarizing, let's hit the gas to make it through this lane. Okay. Whenever there are like polarizing options uh, or polarizing possibilities in, in just about anything, it's really nice. If there's an option offered, why not just offer both? I mean, there is always the production aspect of that, which can always be an issue, but having an option for it, especially for, I mean, the yoke is, is a Model S and X exclusive thing right now. Um, and I guess Cybertruck and uh, semi, but you know, it's Model S and X exclusive. So these are already very, very expensive premium cars. I think it's totally fine to offer the option for that on those cars. Okay, we got the first stop sign here. We're stopping and there's no one behind me, but we can totally go. It's completely clear, whatever. I'm not sure if I have it on mild or aggressive mode for FSD, but I don't even know if that pertains to stop signs or anything like that. So I'm gonna up the speed a little bit because we don't need to be going so slow. Um, but yeah, I love that they offered that, op offered that option. I have personally never driven with a yoke. I have sat in a Model S at a showroom once and I felt the yoke, but I don't really have enough to share perspective on it without driving with it. A lot of people who drive with it do say they love it and I wouldn't be one to just pass judgment on the shape alone because that's something you really need experience with and I think it's really interesting. But at the same time, it just doesn't make sense to force people to try that, especially since Model S is, uh, for me at least, is such an appealing car. Okay, we can go now, yeah. Um, is such an appealing car that that could be a deal breaker for some people. And yeah, that also sucks for Tesla. They might have sold an expensive car to somebody, but uh, you know, what if you're a big Tesla fan, you have the money to spend, but you just don't want that yoke. I could easily see that being a deal breaker for somebody who really wants the car. Um, so now that's no longer a thing. However, some of the more objectively criticizable things about the yoke, which I'm sure you guys all know, 
are the controls on the yoke. There are no stalks, so if you want to change, you know, if you want to put on your blinker, you have to use the buttons on the wheel, which a lot of people talk about how sometimes they don't work. It's awkward if you're, um, you know, if you're doing like a hand over hand turn, um, like with the wheel upside down. And yeah, okay, we were a little bit, a little bit too wide on that technically straight there, but it's kind of like we go to the right a little bit and we're, we're a little bit too far to the right in this lane, but the car's kind of correcting it. So that's, that's not a big issue so far. Uh, yeah, those buttons, that, that's definitely not something I like. Already the touchscreen in this car is, I mean, it's great, but having to rely on it for so many things is definitely a hassle sometimes. I love using the voice commands for things so I don't have to use the touchscreen. Okay, let's hit the gas, we can go. But um, the voice commands I found to be pretty bad, like compared to, I'm used to, I don't even use it that much, but I have an Amazon... Um, Alexa Echo Dot thing. And that thing, it figures out what I'm talking about. It, it, it can usually do exactly what I'm asking it to with no trouble. Um, but the Tesla, like, here's a good example. Actually, a very crucial example. Um, I was making this very same drive last week and it was very, it was raining out. And I was at a traffic light and while I was at the traffic light, the rain started getting very, very heavy. It was like hail, like intense for a second. It's actually my first time experiencing that in this car. Um, and uh, on the glass roof, I guess I, I'm, I, I'm just speculating as to that. That may have been a factor, but it was uh, it was quite intense. It was quite intense the sound of the rain. But anyway, so that happened, and my wipers I had turned them either off or at to a pretty low setting because they were coming on earlier when it like wasn't even raining. Because when you have autopilot on on the highway, it's automatically going to uh, do that. All right. Let's see. We have a right turn here. Um, you can do, you can turn on red, but we can't get past this guy, so we're just gonna have to wait for him, uh, which is fine. Wheel's kind of turning a little bit back and forth, not sure. I think we're just gonna turn on the green at this point, because this guy's not gonna be able to go left and I can't go past him. Uh, we'll see, this is kind of, these are, these are kind of tight lanes on this turn, so we're gonna see if, okay, the car went, it, I would have pressed the gas exactly the same time. So let's see how we handle this turn. And a little close to that guy. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm surprised that I actually canceled it because I, I did kind of touch the wheel a little bit just trying to keep it from, it, it was fine, it wasn't gonna hit that guy, but it was way closer than I would have, that I would have liked, that's for sure. So yeah, the, the rain started coming down really heavily and I didn't have my wipers on or they were on, I think maybe I had them on the one setting, I had them on very low. So I, I, as I'm driving, I don't want to be looking at the screen, especially when there's so much rain, I need to stay alert. So I pressed the voice control button and I said, uh, turn wipers on max. The car did nothing. I don't know, I, I, could, I didn't read what it interpreted, but it, it did nothing, right? So then I was like, turn wipers on four, because four is the final setting. Okay, we need to be in this lane, yes. Oh, and it's actually green right now. Okay, I'm gonna hit the gas because this light lasts forever. Yeah, okay. If, we're, if we got stuck there, we would have been there for a very long time and we don't want that. So we're about to get to the destination. So anyway, uh, I wound up having to use the screen. Uh, I didn't think to tell the car, to ask the car to turn on auto wipers. Maybe that would have done the trick based on the voice command, but I found the voice commands to be not that great. But anyway, this has been a pretty cool drive with um, FSD beta. Not a very complicated drive, but it is at nighttime and uh, I'm very satisfied with the results. I was able to talk to you guys and I did barely anything this whole trip. There were a few times where I took over because maybe the car wasn't staying in the lane exactly like I wanted to or this or that, but uh, overall this is pretty cool. Um, and I hope to do this again soon when I find some other routes as well. So if you guys like this video, please let me know uh, in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.